we've got our propeller balancer here in its nice case. It's just arrived back from having its certification completed. So I have a Dynavibe Classic here, and uh, this is where all the all the magic happens. So on my tablet, um, I also have the Dynavibe manual in an electronic form. I also have the uh, Chadwick's balancer manual and the AC2037E. In AC2037E, the Chadwick manual is called out, and this is basically referred to as the smooth propeller. And its title should pop up there for you to see. The smooth propeller. Excellent resource, main important uh, resource of the actual dynamic balancing. It tells you um, how to take readings, how to set it up, how to use the um, chart here for working out where you need to put weights and how much you need to add and have you added too much or in the wrong location, so on and so forth. It also gives you all of the guidelines for how you install the permanent weights, what positions they can be installed in, what clearances you have to have, and also um, what's the maximum weight you can have in one location on certain sized fasteners. So obviously the unit yep, comes in its nice box. Up here I've got its brand new certification and uh, we want to make sure that's all in date. Uh, got the paper copy of the manual here and then all my cabling and bracketry and I've got lots of got a bag of goodies here, different nuts, bolts and little attachments so that I can mount this to the uh, front of the engine. So this has the optical pickup uh, sensor that uses the reflective tape on the back of the propeller and there's also then the um, vibration portion this little sensor here there we are so these two things mounted on it that allows me to see rotation uh, of the engine in RPM and then in um, how much vi vibration we've got this unit will then take those readings it has an averaging function it'll average it at your cruise RPM that you desire to balance it for the most smooth operation. It then tells me where the heavy spot is, and I add weight obviously to the other side, and then we put that on. We can see here um, on my sheet, now this is the uh, runs we did today. This is for the left engine, so two runs. I did the one run and plotted it, knew exactly where to bring it for the second run. Now doing the um, right engine earlier today what we started with you can see there took me quite a few more goes had a little bit of difficulty with items and basically what I got caught off with was the amount of mass that we were adding had a height to it and when I went from the exterior of the spinner to the permanent mounting spot inside I only changed the radius by that difference where in actual fact I had the weights going from outside to inside so I had a half an inch moment arm that I hadn't worked out and I did my initial run and thought 33.5 grams would correct for the 28.7 where it was fairly decent and of course it wasn't at all and then it took me a little too long to work out what it was but we did get it down to the uh, um, good condition. So. The first run on the one engine allowed me to very quickly uh, understand what I was seeing on the second engine, and I got that done much faster. That's kind of true for anything. If I do a 172 or a 150, which I've done quite frequently, they tend to happen quite quickly. Two different ones here. Uh, optical sensor that picks up a uh, signal off of the propeller, and then our vibration sensor here. And then we'll be plugging that via its cabling into the unit we have in the cockpit. We'll do the engine runs, record the results, and then we can add weights to the spinner assembly to dynamically balance the whole rotating propeller. Okay, other important uh, things to note when you're balancing your propeller is you want to make sure that the spinner is in the correct location. Spinners tend to have a uh, spot that they will run nice and smooth and true and if you mount them slightly differently or screw them down differently they will oscillate and, and cause vibration. You've got to make sure that that's fixed before you do the balance um, because if you fix it afterwards it throws the balance all out to lunch. You need to make sure the propeller is tracking correctly, that you haven't got any large nicks in it, you want to make sure that you haven't got a bad cylinder, bad magneto, bad spark plug. You want to make sure your engine mounts aren't sagged and worn out because any of these items are going to affect the balancing process. So there's quite a lot to do. 
Um, but it's a really amazing difference. It it really changes how the airplane flies. So this engine uh, had about 45 grams of weight put on to balance it out, and you can feel it on the ground. And I know once we get in the air, just like all the other aircraft I've done, it's going to be a real massive difference. Not having all that vibration is going to mean you're not wearing out your exhaust, you're not wearing out engine mounts, cowls, and you're going to make all of your aircraft and your components last much longer. So it's really neat. Um, hopefully some flying soon.